Good morning. I'd like, firstly, to thank the organizing committee for the opportunity. Um, well, compositional data may be defined as vectors whose components are the proportions or percentages of some whole. Uh, oh, the sample space, in this case, is the multidimensional simplex. Uh, well, there are many uh, applications, uh, market share analysis, uh, election forecast or trends along the time, uh, soil composition anal analysis, household expenses com com uh, composition. Um, well, Atkinson uh, has developed a methodology for compositional data analysis based on transformed uh, normal classes. This is a kind of standard uh, for, for this kind of data. Uh, here we focus on Dirichlet regression. Uh, we consider that the data uh, or the sample is, uh, comprises two matrices, the Y matrix uh, corresponding to the responsive variable and, um, and the X matrix corresponding to the covariates uh, that could or not be associated to the response. So the goal is to build a regression predictor as a function for, for Y, as a function for X in the standard uh, regression approach. Uh, here we consider that uh, our data follow a uh, Dirichlet regression with hyperparameters defined by functions of, of by f positive functions of x. In particular, we are interested in linear function functions uh, on x. So we are interested our parameter of interest comprises the the coefficients of the polynomial or the linear combination. Uh, model selection can be done by testing the nullity of some of these, uh, some of these coefficients. Um, for our motivation in this work, we uh, applied and, and tested some, uh, our approach on the Arctic Lake sediments uh, who, which consists of compositions of sand, silt, and clay for 39 sediment samples at different water depths. Uh, so we are interested in, in measure the dependence of the compositions according to uh, different water depth of the, the lake soil. Uh, we are interested in submodels of the complete second order polynomial model, it's defined by this. And he, this is a representation of the data set. Each sample uh, corresponds to a point in the three graphs. For example, the first one has 78% of sand, 19% uh, of silt and 4% of clay. That's the way that we read this data. And uh, the interest is, as, as I mentioned, to measure the dependence of this proportion according to depth. Here we have uh, the continuous curve correspond to a, a first order polynomial on X and the dashed curve correspond to a second order polynomial. So uh, we may be interested in, in test, for example, if the first order polynomial is uh, suitable to model the data. Um, the likelihood um, is indeed a, a, a product of Dirichlet, where the novelty is the, the, the function uh, uh, driving the Dirichlet distribution. The gradients are easily computed and necessary for the, the optimization step. Well, uh, fitting the Richelieu distribution is straightforward for constant parameters, but the difficulty arises when we attempt 
to extend the estimation to Dirichlet regression. Uh, in other words, when we try to put the, the, the covariates in the model, some ki sometimes you may be, you may have some difficulties. Uh, starting values, values and regularization policies must be carefully chosen to assure the optimization convergence. Rejas and Jernigan proposed a method for choosing starting values, uh, which is based on drawing resamples of the original da data, and for this uh, set of resamples, they propose to fit these resamples by least square methods. Uh, I will won't I have time to, to give the details, but uh, the drawback is that this method does not guarantee that the starting values for the coefficients indeed uh, while the positive values for alpha. Uh, and this constraint is mandatory since the Dirichlet is all, uh, all, uh, only defined for positive values for mm -hmm. the HIPAR parameters. Our proposal is, in a certain sense, quite simple. Uh, is a standard uh, procedure in optimization uh, problems. We start, we extend our initial model in order to include uh, constant terms in the form of, of artificial intelligence, uh, sorry, artificial variables. Um, and uh, we, uh, so we, uh, fit a Dirichlet param uh, distribution with constant parameters in this case. And uh, 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 in the next step, we solve a sequence of optimization problems that drive the artificial variables back to zero. Uh, we introduce uh, um, pe uh, penalty pe penalties for the artificial variables in the model. I, I won't have to uh, time to, to give details, but uh, I would like to stress just a point here. Uh, we consider that for each model, we have a corresponding matrix, a Boolean matrix M, indicating which parameters are in the original model, in this case, MKG is one, and uh, which, uh, which coefficients are zero. I will use this later. Uh, once we have, uh, once you have the estimate for the coefficients, you may indeed, for example, co co compute the 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 predictive whole of the the regression. For example, co computing the mean mode, uh, uh, credibility mm -hmm. intervals, etc. Uh, for the hypothesis test, we propose uh, the full Bayesian significance test, uh, which was proposed by Julio Stern and Pere uh, Carlos Pereira in 1999. And a complete review of these uh, approaches uh, presented in the Bayesian analysis journal. Um, we consider that pa the parameter space is a subset of Rn, and the hypothesis is defined by a, a, const a set of constraints of, of inequality and equality constraints, and the particular interest is on sharp hypothesis, on where the, the dim dimension of the hypothesis is uh, <coughs> smaller than the complete parameter space. The computation, of, the computation of the evidence consists in two steps. The first one is, consists in finding the maximum or supremum of the posterior under the hypothesis. And the integration step consists in uh, integrating the posterior density in the tangential set, the tangential set is defined as the region of the parameter space with density higher than F star, uh, higher than the maximum under the hypothesis. Um, just to give a small intu uh, idea, um, we have a, a small example 
Here we represent the parameter space in this triangle, indeed is a simplex. Um, we are here we have a, a curve corresponding to the hypothesis and uh, the idea behind the FBST is as follows. If the hypothesis traverses a low uh, region of the parameter space of low uh, posterior density, then this set, this, uh, this level curve corresponding indeed of, to the, the F star, uh, this set has a, a large mass and therefore we have a strong evidence against the hypothesis. On the other hand, if the hypothesis traverses a region of higher um, posterior density, then this region has a small mass, and we have, therefore, a, a small evidence against the hypothesis. Well, uh, the evidence in favor of, of the hypothesis is a complement. In this work, our theta, our parameter of interest, consists of the set of uh, coefficients. Uh, we assume here an improper uniform prior for beta. FBST has some uh, practical advantages, uh, advantages that in certain, certain cases permit us to, to do that. And in this case, by our posterior is proportional to the likelihood. Numerical integration is made, made via metro metropolis hasting, but uh, I think the methods of Michael Bittencourt may help us a lot in the convergence issue. Um, well, uh, the, the summary is oh, how much time? Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, we have some uh, results. Uh, the first time re related to parameter estimation procedure. Indeed, we, we generated random subsample of Arctic Lake data set with uh, sample size of 20 and 27. Um, and for each um, subsample generated, we try to fit uh, with an incomplete polynomial model described by a random structural matrix M. In this case, we, what we'll do here is for each sample, we generate a random model uh, indicating wh wh what or which uh, coefficients must be present in the model and which one are due. In this case, the, the, we, we control that by a probability that we uh, varied in, in this range. Well, we measured the failure rate of the method and the compo computational processing time. We compared our approach with the Hijazes one. Uh, the, the failure rate uh, is quite different. Uh, we have uh, we outperform with gr greater, large advantages uh, the Hijazes method. Uh, as well, the processing time here, we have a log to scale. We, we, our methods is much faster than Hijaz's one. And this is interesting but, uh, because the, the, the error rate, failure rate and processing time is dependent on uh, the, the quantity or the proportional, proportion of uh, non null uh, coefficients in the model. Uh, we are trying to figure out why we has we have this uh, failure rate. It, it n would not be expectable, but uh, we were we are trying to to understand and enhance this failure rate too. Uh, for hypothesis test, we consider as a complete model a second order polynomials. Uh, from the, the Arctic Lake data set. And our hypothesis is that the third component, or, or sorry, or the, 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 
quadratic term of the polynomial equals zero. So this is a implicit assumption that uh, alpha j may be suitable, suitable model by a first order polynomial. We have analyzed the type one, type two, and average errors, and uh, also uh, in, with different, different uh, thresholds. Uh, well, in graphs A, B, and C, we have the type one, type two, and average errors, errors for FBST, the first column, and likelihood ratio, the second column. Uh, here we use it asymptotic um, acceptance rejection thresholds. We uh, notice that uh, FBST has a larger type 1 error. Uh, on the other hand, uh, a smaller type 2 error, uh, the average error uh, outperformed, but it's not very clear how to compare both approaches since these measures are not exactly comparable. So uh, we performed a second experiment where we fix the threshold for acceptance rejection empirically. We generate samples uh, uh, from, from the theta star, the, the parameter under the hypothesis. Uh, and with this sample, we fix the, the threshold. And uh, we measure uh, the type 2 errors on, the, the, on samples generated outside the hypothesis, on point of maximum posterior, uh, unconstrained posterior. What you notice, notice here is that uh, in this, uh, uh, with this uh, comparison, FBST seems to have a better discrimination uh, power in the sense that it could uh, provide a smaller type 2 error when you fix the type 1. Well, I'd like to thank the uni our universities, our uh, research agents, some reference, and thank you. What are your questions? Proper way to ask. As you might expect. Uh, when I see pictures of a simplex and domains in there that have prior mass, and you talk about optimization and computing, I think of nested mm -hmm. sampling. I think, sorry. I think of nested sampling, the, which what we do is, you know, we get a full exploration of the space, and as you samples come in, they explore this space properly, and anything you want to do on top of that is okay, because you've got essentially full exploration of the space, and it gives a very clean environment, either for getting a posterior out, or even for just going to the maximum, because these techniques that give full exploration are good for optimization as well. So. You know, it's not just arrogance, it's honesty, which makes me recommend that you do look at this as a very clean computing environment. Thank you. Other questions? Comments? Disparaging remarks? No, just kidding. No? Let's thank our speaker then. Thank you.